You at the Zoo is an eTech Ohio project produced in partnership with CET, Think TV, and the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden, with additional support provided by the Robert Gould Foundation. Hi, I'm Thane Maynard from the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. And I'm Ebony from the U.S. Zoo team. And today we're going to talk about what it takes to keep a species going, generation after generation. It's a fact of life that no one lives forever, but through reproduction, new individuals take the place of those that die to continue the species. Here to tell us more is the Cincinnati Zoo's mammal curator, Mike Delaney. Well, reproduction is essential to the survival of species because animals don't live forever. They need to be able to pass on their traits to future generations. With sexual reproduction, the chances of survival are increased because each parent will make contributions to the offspring, therefore picking up the better traits from each animal for survival. A female may look for certain traits in a male to breed with, such as in lions. Females will quite often look for the lion with a large, dark mane. And this sort of indicates that that male is a big, strong, healthy male. The Malayan tiger is one of six remaining subspecies of tiger. They are found primarily in the Malay Peninsula and in Thailand. There are estimated to be between only 600 and 800 of these tigers left in the wild. A species survival plan is a program in which we manage the whole North American population of a particular species as one unit. One of the most important things to consider when putting together an SSP is that you need to know the lineage of all the animals involved. This way we can make sure that we're not breeding animals that are closely related to one another. There are now 54 Malayan tigers in North America and our job is to try to keep that number from getting any lower. As a matter of fact, trying to increase that number. So many tigers face so many threats in the wild that if they were to disappear, we would never have them again. And once a species is gone, it can never be brought back. Even though our tiger cubs have the same parents, each one is a unique individual. No two tigers look or act alike. But how do we tell them apart? I think the U.S. Zoo team needs to investigate. Hi, I'm Paige. I'm Devante. And I'm Tamara, and today we're investigating tigers. My name is Pat Callahan. I'm a head keeper of cats here at the zoo, and I hear that you're interested in doing an identification on individual tigers. You work with what you have, and what we have are stripes, size, a little bit of behavior, almost like a personality trait. This is a mom and brothers, so they're going to look a lot alike, and you have to look closely to know which one is which. Well, the patterns on our chest are different. And the stripes on our tail have some differences in them. Some of them are fatter and some of them are smaller, too. What did we notice with Tiger One? Is well, Tiger One the lightest one? Which one do we want, Tiger One? Should we do the one? Yeah, the relaxed one. Maybe you should chart it in different sections of... Color, size, and behavior? Yeah. I guess oh, that one could be Tiger Four. I'm going to mark that in the other column. Now that you've completed your analysis of what they look like, I have baby pictures. And I'm going to let you use that to compare your information and see who's who. Well, on Tiger 5, we said it was bulky built. And I think Tiger 2 is more bulky than the rest. I would say this one was darker. What we're trying to do today is normal zookeeping work, identifying animals. Very important, something we do every day. So tell me who you've identified so far. Well, we think Tiger 1, the lightest one that was the calmest, is Hutan the mother. Hutan the mother, okay, she is very different. We think that Tiger 2 would be Tan Bear because he seems longer and leaner. For Tiger 3, we think it was Bashir because he looks more bulky and more muscular. I think that's true. He he doesn't miss any meals. In Tiger 4, we thought was Tahan. He has lighter color and the stripes on his neck form a necklace. And for the fifth one, we think it was Kadar. We noticed that the fur from the top to the bottom fades. So they all have differences, and I would agree with who you have identified and chosen. That, that looks pretty good to me. Roar! Once we're familiar with the tiger's characteristics, we can use that information along with the tiger's genetic profile to successfully match it with a mate. I see more tiger cubs in our near future. I'm Thane Maynard. And I'm Ebony. And we'll, we'll see, see you at the zoo. zoo.